My name's Matt, Scotian Canadian. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this video. Let's go through the list of free agents ahead of July 1st. These are guys that Mon the Montreal Canadiens could potentially tar target, and I'll give you my opinions on these kind of in a, a rapid fire style. Uh, now, first and foremost, just want to mention Bergevin held a press conference uh, just the other day, and he is saying that he wants to be very cautious with free agency. He doesn't want to sign a guy to high term and high AAV, where you're likely also going to be giving a guy a no move, especially if he's an unrestricted free agent. Um, a guy like this could hinder uh, your ability to sign one of your young players moving forward who are expecting a contract. Um, so Bergman knows he has to be responsible and careful um, entering this free agency. A lot of teams make mistakes this time, time of year and Bergman does not want to be one of those guys. One of his only mistakes was that Alsner contract and uh, that's not too bad for a seven-year reign as general manager of the Montreal Canadiens. I definitely trust my general manager through free agency to make the right decision. So let's go in a rapid style, uh, uh, rapid fire style here. Artemi Panarin is on the free agent list, left winger. Um, it's been rumored he's going to either Florida or the Rangers. That's kind of where I'd expect him to go. I highly doubt Montreal has a chance with him at all. I will serve myself up a big old play to catch it if <laughs> he signs with the Habs. <sighs> Does this look like a blue and white rim to you? No, that ain't happening. Uh, <laughs> Duchesne also available. This could be very interesting. Check out my video, my full video on my thoughts on Duchesne coming to Montreal. Uh, you can find that on my channel. But he's been rumored to be going to Nashville, uh, and uh, Nashville could be looking to get rid of Subban to make cap room for him too. So that'll be an interesting thing to follow. Um, Montreal could be in on him. I could see Bergevin doing his due diligence and exploring it, seeing what Duchesne is asking for. But at the end of the day, if he's not willing to fall within our cap structure, I think Mark Bergevin will uh, approach with caution on this one, especially where we have quite a bit of potential down the middle in our roster now. Uh, another guy, Joe Pavelski. It'd be interesting to see him on the Montreal Canadiens. He's one of my favorite players in the NHL, the best in the league at deflecting pucks, uh, scored a ton of goals last year after a bit of a struggle season in 2017-18, but last year Pavelski was an absolute stud. He's uh, getting up there though, uh, 34, 35 I believe. Honestly, I think San Jose is going to find a way to get him back uh, on their team next year. Can't see him going anywhere other than uh, than San Jose, but still will be interesting to follow. Uh, Zuccarello, I'm, I haven't really heard anything on him. Played with Dallas to end the year last year. Uh, great player. Puts up a ton of uh, offensive numbers. More of a playmaker than a goal scorer. He is a right wing, but Montreal needs more of a shooter on the right wing than a playmaker. Uh, then we have Anders Lee. I feel like the, the Islanders are going to find a way to lock up this guy. He's been one of their best goal scorers for a long time. Cannot see him coming to Montreal. Uh, then we have Nyquist. Uh, he's a little smaller of a guy, a middle six winger, plays left wing and right wing. Montreal doesn't really need a guy like this. They have a surplus of guys like this already. He's another guy. Can't really see him coming to Montreal. Then we have uh, uh, Janssen. <clears throat> uh, or sorry, Johansson uh, played with Boston, had that great cup run with Boston, one of the, one of the best trades for the Boston Bruins, along with Char Charlie Coyle as well, actually, um, <clears throat> uh, for the playoffs. But it's rumored that Johansson is looking to, uh, or Johansson is looking to re-sign with the Boston Bruins. So once again, not a guy that I could see going to Montreal. Uh, then we have Justin Williams from Carolina, their captain. I figure they'll figure a way, uh, find out a way. Uh, I figure Carolina will find a way to get him back on their roster next season. So no Montreal for him either. Then we have Joe Thornton. Once again, a guy I see staying in uh, San Jose, even if he has to take a discount uh, to go on a cup run with them. I think he's committed to them. Then we have Michael Furland for the Carolina Hurricanes. Carolina has a ton of cap space. Furland was a big part of their team last year. They paid a high price to get him from the Calgary Flames. Uh, he plays left wing, right wing. He's a big body, physical player, but he puts up those offensive numbers as well. He's entering his prime. Very interesting player. I would love for Mark Bergevin to kick tires on Michael Furland, uh, but I do think Carolina has the uh, inside path to locking him up uh, for at least a couple more years. But like I said, uh, he's a guy I would like to see as a Montreal Canadian, especially if you can get him on a, uh, a decent contract. Um, let me know what you think. Um, it's not imperative that the Habs go after him or sign him, and I don't think it's likely, but uh, he's a player that interests me for sure because of his physical ability as well as his ability to put up points. Uh, then we have Wayne Simmons. Um, he's a big right winger. He's really struggled in the last couple uh, couple years. I do not think Montreal will be going after him. 
And then you have Corey Perry, right winger, recently bought out by the Anaheim Ducks. He had two years left at 8.625 millions. Now whoever gets him uh, does not have to deal with that high cap. It. He's a free agent now. And uh, check out my full video on that. I'm very curious uh, whether or not the Montreal Canadiens will pursue him. He's a, a big right winger at 6'3", 205. And... Uh, Stanley Cup champion, a leader. Of course, he dealt with some injury troubles uh, last year with his knee. He had knee surgery, um, and he's getting up there in age, but I wonder if he's willing to take a team-friendly contract at a low cap hit, maybe come play with a team like the Montreal Canadiens who could be going on a cup run. Maybe he wants to play with Carey Price, Shea Weber, guys he's familiar with from Team Canada. Uh, could be a low-risk, high-reward deal for the Habs, but check out my full video on that and make sure to let me know your opinion as well. Uh, Ryan Dezingle uh, for the Columbus Blue Jackets, they paid a high price for him at the deadline last year. I feel like this is a guy they're going to pursue heavily, so I don't think he's an option for the Habs, despite him being uh, a, a left-winger slash right-winger that can score goals. Then you have Broussard, middle six winger. Montreal's center depth is looking fairly good right now. Can't see them being in on him. Of course, there's some more uh, UFA forwards on the market, but we'll, we'll jump right into defensemen. Dion Phaneuf, recently bought out by the LA Kings. Uh, that'll be a hard no for me. Do not want to see him in a Habs jersey. He's getting up there in age and not quite the defenseman he used to be. Ain't happening. And then you have Tyler Myers. He's going to get a big payday entering the prime of his career uh, for the Jets. I feel like they're going to do everything they can to get him locked up. And it uh, wouldn't really make sense for Montreal to go after them and pay big dollar because then they'd have to restructure their right side defense completely, which already looks fine as it is. But uh, keep it on Tyler Myers. He is a big name on the UFA market. Should be interesting to see where he goes. Then you have Anton Strawman from the Tampa Bay Lightning. A veteran defender. Great uh, shutdown D. Puts up those offensive numbers as well. Veteran poised with the puck. But Montreal is kind of set in that right D right now. Can't see him coming to Montreal. Then we have Jake Gardner, left-handed defenseman. Former Maple Leaf, or at least you have to assume with the cap troubles that the Leafs are going through right now. Leafs fans and media are making it seem like Gardner leaving is not a big deal whatsoever. But right there, you're losing 40 to 50 points off your back end. And trying to tarnish his relationship a little bit and uh you know he did have some bad mistakes in those game sevens but i think it's overblown his defensive woes he's a quality top four defenseman he'll be looking for a payday like i said he dealt with some injury issues so got to be a little uh you got to proceed with caution with jake gardner but check out my video on jake and uh my opinion on whether or not the Habs should pursue him and uh yeah check it out and then after that there's a lot of five six defensemen on the market one of them will be jordy ben he will be testing free agency mark bergevin recently came out and told us that he had a solid year for the Habs last year a career year put up uh had some had some pretty key goals as well but he played some great shutdown hockey for us once he was um specifically on that five uh or specifically on that uh, bottom pair so he's earned a pay raise he'll be probably looking for some term here where he's uh just over 30 um but it'll be interesting where there's so many 5-6 defensemen on the market. Will he get what he's looking for or will he uh, uh, be willing to come back and see what uh, the, the Habs are to offer him if we're looking for him for depth? But I think the Habs are in a good spot for him leaving right now anyway with guys like Juleson and Brook and Fleury um, ready to, to fill some minutes and fall in as well. So just to just to uh, to finish off here, let's go over the restricted free agents. Just just to say we did um, offer sheets are pretty uncommon, but uh, you never know. It's a it's been an interesting season, and there's uh, some interesting names. It's a big RFA list, some big names out there. Uh, Mitch Marner, of course, we know what's going on with him. He's looking for a big pay raise. The Leafs are kind of handcuffed right now until they get that figured out, and they've kind of put themselves in that position. They're, they've they've set the precedent that their best players get 11 million, and he is one of them. He's led them in scoring the last couple of years. So uh, I don't think the Montreal Canadiens will be offer sheeting uh, Mitch Marner. There's no way Bergevin's going to give up three or four first round picks for for one asset. It's just not going to happen. Then you have Miko Rantanen for Colorado, Point for Tampa Bay, Aho for Carolina, Line A for uh, for Winnipeg, Kachuk for Calgary, Besser for Vancouver. These guys are going to make big money. I hope it does. I hope the market doesn't get saturated with these young guys making nine. 10 11 mil i hope we find some middle ground contracts here around the seven to eight range but we'll have to wait and see then there's timo meyer that's a very interesting one could it be an offer sheet option for the habs they do need a right wing sniper san jose uh some cap struggles right now they got quite a few contracts to renew guys like pavelski um and thornton they just signed carlson to that big deal could timo meyer be a guy you get through an offer sheet I definitely wouldn't be opposed to it where he's a former uh, Hab. He's a power forward and could be solid through his prime. I'd say it's unlikely, but very interesting. Keep an eye on that. Maybe he's available via trade too. Never know. I feel like San Jose is going to want to 
keep this guy in long term. Anyway, uh, then you got Kyle Connor, William Carlson, and uh, Kapanen. Check out my video on Kapanen and whether or not I think the Habs should offer sheet him. The Leafs are in a tough position right now. They can't really move forward and commit money to other guys because of the Mitch Marner situation. Is this an opportunity for Bergevin or another GM to come in, offer uh, Kapanen an offer sheet if he signs it? Then really, you, if it's around the four mil, I think you only got to give the Leafs a second rounder. That's well below market value for a right winger like Kapanen. Once again, Habs could use a right winger. Uh, not only do they need a left defenseman, they need a sniper to help that power play uh, on the right side. Kapanen is just that. Then you got guys like Colin White, Heinen, Bavillier, McAvoy, Wierenski, Provorov, Sanheim, and Butcher. I feel like all those guys are likely staying with uh, their team, their current teams. Uh, but you got to keep an eye on, and it should be fun. Free agency is going to be a blast. Like I said, Bergman will approach with caution. I trust him fully. Do you? Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you hear any other rumors. Who are you hoping to sign? Who do you think the Habs should go after? Uh, can't wait to hear from you guys. And As always, thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about the video down in the comments. Hit that subscribe button if you like my content. Lots of good stuff coming over the off season. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Scotian Canadian. Cheers, guys. Go Habs, go!